So this is Don't Love It to Death, Best Practices for Downstream Use of Project Trademarks. Uh, my wife actually came up with that name when I was describing what I wanted to talk about at Open Source Summit. Um, and I really, really liked it because I think it's, it really kind of captures uh, what we'll be talking about today. Um, I commend you all for choosing to leave the puppies uh, and come listen to a lawyer talk. Um, I'm not sure I would have made that decision, but here we are. So, introductions and housekeeping. Um, my name is Daniel Scales. I'm Chief Brand Counsel at the Linux Foundation. Um, I've been at the Linux Foundation for two years. Uh, before that, I was at um, Choate Hall & Stewart, a Boston law firm, led their uh, trademark and copyright practice. Um, so I've been employed by the Linux Foundation for two years, but I've been working with them uh, and their projects on trademark matters since 2010. Um, I'm a U.S. attorney, so the, the legal concepts I'll be discussing are, are based on U.S. law, but they're pretty universal. Um, so, um, you know, I don't think there's anything too U.S.-centric about it. Um, while I am a lawyer, I'm not your lawyer. Um, and even if I am your lawyer, uh, this is not legal advice. This presentation is for informational purposes only. Um, and the views expressed are my own. They don't necessarily reflect the views of the Linux Foundation or any of the projects that we host. Um, so as the LF's trademark lawyer, um, I get a ton of questions every week um, about um, how somebody can use uh, the trademarks of one of the open source projects that we host. Um, I also handle trademark enforcement, um, which you know, that, that's the, the shorthand word that, that trademark lawyers use. Um, but uh, for our work, most of the time, it's an educational exercise uh, rather than an adversarial one. Because um, when we talk through, um, you know, the issues and, um, you know, what, what's relevant, um, I think people um, understand it um, pretty quickly. All right, so why did I want to discuss downstream users and, and how they show their love for, for open source projects? Well, let's talk a bit about what a trademark is. So a trademark signifies the unique source of a good or a service. It signifies the source, so it's important that any use of the trademark direct consumers back to the project. So the source for an open source project is the project, and it's important to keep that clear. Um, sometimes, even with the best of intentions, downstream users kind of lose sight of this um, and use uh, project trademarks in a way that don't necessarily um, promote the project. Um, and so there's a lot of confusion out there, but also confusion about not just how to use project trademarks, but why that is. And so I want to cover some of those things uh, today. All right, I'm going to briefly talk I hesitate to do this, but putting up a statute. Um, but, I, but I think it's important because um, I want to kind of get to the root of, of what we're talking about. Um, so trademark law protects marks that are used to identify and distinguish his or her goods from those manufactured or sold by others and to indicate the source of the good. So that's directly from the U.S. trademark statute. Um, so, you know, what does that mean? It's... it's um, it's not just the mark itself, it's mark when used with a specific good or a specific service and to, communi to communicate to consumers where that came from. So remember, while trademarks are a type of intellectual property right, they have a lot of value, they play an important consumer protection role. Um, where did this stuff come from? Who made it? Um, can I trust them? Um, do they make other good stuff? Um, and this is all, you know, kind of generic trademark information. It's not specific to open source projects. Um, and, uh, but let's talk specifically about open source. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so a single unique source, that's the other component here. So for a project, that's not always straightforward. Um, and that's fine as long as the project has kind of decided, like, what it is. So you know, is it a sole maintainer project? Um, so then the person is the source. Um, is it a legal entity? Is it hosted at a foundation? Is it a uh, legal partnership? Um, you know, whatever the trademark owner is, that's where the, uh, uh, where uh, the trademark drives people. 
So for open source trademarks, you know, they're, they're the beacon um, for the project. It brings the relevant people together. It's the central rallying point. Um, and remember, you know, most pop popular open source licenses grant broad copyright rights to downstream users, but they don't grant trademark rights. So this is the Apache license. Um, Apache actually has an express provision on trademarks. Um, not all open source licenses do, um, but they don't include a grant of trademark rights. Um, you know, Apache does uh, ex expressly exclude the right to use the trademark. Question. Sure. Correct. Yeah. So, um, trademarks um, in most countries um, are generated through use of some um, something, a word, a logo, a color, a smell, um, that indicates the source of that good or service. Uh, but the key part there is that it's used um, and used in the sale of a good or uh, the distribution of a good or the um, rendering of a service. Um, so just by, you know, creating a logo or creating a name of a project, that doesn't create trademark rights. It's actually putting it out there and using it as a source identifier. So registration um, in, the, in the United States, which is kind of the odd duck here, uh, you don't need to register trademarks to have enforceable trademark rights in the United States and some other common law countries. Um, in other countries, you obtain the trademark rights first through registration, and then you maintain those rights through use. Um, so you can register a trademark before you've used it, um, but you can then um, be challenged after registration by somebody saying, wait a second, you're not entitled to registration, you haven't used this in connection with the goods you say that you're doing it. Um, so, I mean, registration, even in the United States, provides a lot of meaningful benefits. Um, there's a cost there, obviously, um, and they're national in scope, so it can get expensive, you know, very quickly. Um, but, uh, yeah, so even where registration is how you get the initial rights, use is still relevant for maintaining those rights. Um, okay, open source trademarks. Uh, so they help users, contributors, sponsors, partners navigate the software landscape. So how, do, how can people find the project? Um, and why do they want to in the first place, right? So if I'm a user, I learn about this great software with the features that I need. Um, so I seek it out based on its name, right? I do an internet search for it. Um, and then I confirm that, yes, that is in fact what I'm looking for, you know, when I see the logos that I recognize and, and the other branding features. Um, you know, a contributor thinks they can help and seeks out the original project to get involved. They wanna make sure they're working with the right folks. Um, sponsors see the value and they seek out those running the project and want to support it. Um, partners want to communicate to people things like compatibility or how everything works together in a stack. Um, you know, the, the brand of the project um, helps facilitate all of this. Um, I want to briefly touch on a few other trademark concepts um, that are going to be relevant to this discussion um, and why they're important specifically for, for project trademarks. Um, so all trademark owners, including open source projects, must control how their marks are used. Um, it's not optional, it's not should, it's not it's a good idea, it's not best practice, they must. Um, the reason is, um, if you allow somebody else to use your mark um, and you don't um, control the, the quality of the goods that are being used with your mark, um, how the mark is displayed, whether the mark is modified. Um, remember the, the key point of, the key function of a trademark, it's a source identifier. So if somebody else is using that same trademark to communicate something else, then it's not a trademark anymore. It's not identifying a source, or it's identifying a different source. In any event, it can invalidate the trademark rights completely. Another, um, 
you know, concept uh, that, that I think is important, particularly for this discussion, is the, the, the trademark is the trademark. Um, so combining two or, or more established trademarks could invalidate both trademarks. Um, so this is definitely a case of more is not better. So adding features or additional words um, to another party's trademarks um, kind of dilutes the value. Um, and if you're, if you're adding your own trademarks to a project trademark, um, it's, just, it's confusing for both sides and dilutes the value and could potentially invalidate both trademarks. Um, I also see um, you know, requests from uh, people who want to use project trademarks where they, they want to modify it. It's like, oh, I, I see your logo, but um, we want to add this to it to show you know, how we're using it. Um, you know, again, the, the trademark is, is a beacon and it, and it should be driving people back to the project. Um, and so if there's too many variations on a, on a single mark, all different beacons, it, it's, um, you know, then it's not functioning anymore. Um, and and it loses the value that it's supposed to be serving. All right, so this is not a never use a project trademark talk. Um, and, and quite the contrary. Um, there's a lot of situations where, where projects uh, want their marks to be used uh, by others. Um, so project trademarks are often used descriptively um, to discuss the project software, its activities, uh, other information about the, the project, the fact that you're sponsoring a project. Um, and that's a different type of use than, than a trademark use, and that's an important distinction. Um, you know, descriptive use is just kind of natural language. Um, you're not using it to, uh, as a brand. Um, and, and that, you know, generally, you know, is fine as long as it's not misleading. Um, some projects expressly license out their trademarks to others to communicate specific um, use types or compatibility or something conforms to the project specification. Um, and, you know, so there, there'd be, you know, actual, you know, license terms in place that expressly grants the rights that the project intends for, for the licensee to have. Um, and, you know, in those license agreements, I was thinking about this the other day, you know, I've stared at this language a couple million times and, you know, my 20 odd years of practice. Um, you'll see it in every trademark license that use by the licensee and errors to the benefit of the trademark owner. It's like, you know, I wanted to, you know, take a step back and, and think about that for a minute. You know, what, what does that mean? Uh, so it means, you know, any goodwill generated by these authorized uses in order to the benefit of the trademark owner. Um, you know, so what it really means is, you know, the, the, the authorized, authorized use of the mark, you know, is kind of directing the value back to the project. It's not for the licensee or other authorized user. It's not for their benefit that they're using the project trademark. It's for the project. Um, and I think, you know, asking those questions, are you using the project trademark to support the project? Or are you using the project trademark to attract people to and promote your own product and service? You know, using the goodwill that's already been established by the project trademark to attract people to you. Well, that's, kind of, you know, that's not really, you know, inuring to the benefit of the, of the uh, project. What's the difference between the product? Like, say, like, I'm with a project, and I want to use the Yeah, and, and so we're, I'm going to get into some specific examples in, in a bit, but, but I think you're, you're getting it right that um, it, it's not a binary uh, switch, right? The, the best result is that um, a downstream user is using the project, you know, trademark in a way that supports the project, but they're also building their own brand and communicating to people why it's relevant, like why would they care about it? Um, and you know, I'll get into some some examples about that um, in a bit. Um, so 
you know, ask yourself why you want to use the, the project trademark. You know, if, you, if you use, if you built a product using, if you built a business using open source software and want to use the project trademarks, do it in a way that supports the project and its trademarks. And then the point we were just talking about, and that builds your own brand too. You know, there's, um, there's alignment here. And um, you know, it, it, when you talk to people, um, you know, when issues come up um, and, and explain this to them, you know, it, it hadn't occurred to them you know, about you know, how they can build their own brand and that they should be building their own brand. Um, and you know, it's, they're often great conversations, but I'm just a, kind of amazed that you know, if, you're, if you're using a really well-known open source project um, and you, you want people to know that you're using it and that you're providing services related to it or you've built something on top of it, um, that's great, but so are lots of other people. What you should be doing is promoting your own business. And you, now you can certainly communicate that you're using the open source project and how you're using it. Um, but the brand value you should be trying to be building is your own. So how do we do that? All right. So step one, some basics. Um, I would say do at least this. So one, Comply with applicable trademark law. Um, I think that's straightforward enough, um, but yet uh, I'm still gainfully employed because that seems to be a challenge. Um, so, you know, <coughs> what does it you know, mean, comply with the law? The basic concept is don't create confusion, right? So if, if, you're, if you're using a project trademark, um, make it clear, you know, what is yours and what is the project's. Um, that should be immediately recognizable by, and the, the legal standard is the relevant consumer. Um, you know, somebody visiting, you know, your company's website should be able to understand and distinguish between the goods and services that you're offering and what came from the open source project. Um, other thing is comply with the project's published trademark usage guidelines. So most trademark, uh, most open source projects publish uh, trademark usage guidelines. Um, typically, they provide a bit more detail on what the law allows, um, and they, um, you know, do uh, like ex specific examples for that project and, and how the law applies there. Um, but they often go beyond that and provide specific blanket permissions um, in certain cases. So if a project says, you know what, if people want to make T-shirts with their logo on it and hand it out at a conference, that's great. Happy to see it. Go ahead, knock yourself out. And they'll include things like that in their, their project usage guidelines. Um, so I'd say that's the, the first place to look. Um, you know, consult with your trademark lawyer. Um, but, you know, even before you do that, read the trademark guidelines from the project. Um, there's going to be, um, you know, useful information in there. Um, other information is um, that's typically included is if you do use it, should you use the R with a circle, which signifies a registered trademark, uh, or the TM symbol, which signifies um, an unregistered trademark. Um, there might be links to the official artwork. Um, so again, typically, you know, you shouldn't be modifying another party's trademarks. So if you can get the official artwork directly from them, um, that's a um, preferable. Um, and there might be some, you know, uh, I'm sure you've seen it, you know, kind of branding guidelines of how to actually display things. So how much white space around it and, you know, is there a specific font that should be used, things like that. Um, now that said, sometimes you read them and you still don't know if what you want to do like complies with the, the project's guidelines or not. Um, so ask. The other thing that, that trademark usage guidelines almost universally have is contact information. Um, there's going to be an email address in there where you can reach out to the project um, and um, ask them, you know, if what you want to do um, complies with the guidelines. Um, I want to talk specifically um, about names, um, and I, I think you know this might go to, to one of the questions that was asked, you know, earlier. So a lot of times where we get into issues, um, companies want to incorporate an open source project's trademark into their product name or into their company name. Um, sometimes it makes sense and there's ways of doing it um, that are, they're certainly described in the Linux Foundation trademark uh, usage guidelines. Um, I think you'll see it in, in a lot of other ones um, where there's a distinction between including it in the brand name 
and then including it in the name um, as a uh, descriptive um, you know, tool. So for example, um, you know, if, you're, if you're doing something in the container space um, and you name your you know, widget um, and you add on you know, four Kubernetes and for the Docker version, you do four Docker. Um, well, that's kind of describing, it's not really part of the brand, that's more of a descriptive use. And generally that's gonna be okay because it's communicating to people like which version it is and is it the one that I want. Um, but you know, more often than not, there's better ways to communicate the relationship between what you're doing and, and the open source project. And um, it's just amazing to me the lengths that, that people will go to try to accomplish all marketing communication through the name. Um, use the entire marketing toolbox. I love a good tagline. Taglines are great. Um, so name your product wherever you want to name your product. And then, you know, then, you know, it's an, uh, a solution for Kubernetes as a tagline. It's like, okay, but, you know, now I understand what it is. Or, you know, documentation, um, make it clear, make it great. You know, you could, everyone goes to the, you know, company's website so that they, um, they can read there about how it relates to the open source project. Um, but jamming everything into the name, um, more often than not, it's, it's not a great idea. All right, so step two, you're gonna do the easy stuff. You're gonna comply with the law. You're gonna apply with the usage guidelines. You're gonna talk to the project and, and make sure that you know, what you wanna do you know, works for them. Um, but you know, what I'd like to see is you know, companies go beyond what's required um, and really tell themselves, like, no, I'm gonna, this, you know, we built a business off of this project software. Like, I'm gonna promote them. Like, I want this ecosystem to thrive. So you know, use your branding to, to help do that. So, you know, one thing, trademark notices. Um, you know, there's a customary way to, to post legal notices like copyright and, and trademark notices, you know, particularly on a website. It's in that four point font at the bottom of the screen that you can't read and nobody bothers reading. Um, but it doesn't have to be like that. So I would say, you know, still do that because I think people are conditioned to, to seeing it there. But, you know, so something like that you know, copyright 2023, Daniel Coe, all right, reserved. It's like, all right, you know, I'm using software from the Scalesomatic uh, project, so I have to include Scalesomatic as a trademark of the Linux Foundation. Okay, like, yeah, that, that's what's required. But, I mean, if you love the Scalesomatic project, you know, do something more like this. You know, Daniel Coe, that's my company, uses software from the Scalesomatic project in its products. Daniel Code developers frequently contribute to Scalesomatic and part actively participate in the community. To learn more about the Scalesomatic project and how you can participate, see the project website. Again, it's a beacon guide people to the project. Um, Scalesomatic is hosted by the Linux Foundation. See linuxfoundation.org Linux for more information. Um, you know, so you know, you could, I think you can see the difference between notice one and notice two, and the difference there in, in the relationship between um, the, you know, Daniel Co and what we're doing and the, the scales of matic project. All right, what else can you do? You know, publicize your use of the software in a way that draws more to the community. Um, there was a great um, example of this on day one of, of the summit where a company presented on how it uses eBPF, and I loved what they were doing because um, they were singing the praises of, of eBPF, but then they were communicating how they used it in their business. And so it was very clear, you know, the separation of the two, eBPF is the project and, and its software, um, but then they were talking about their own brand and what they were doing with it. Um, I thought it was fantastic. Um, consider sponsoring the project. Um, you know, all projects, you know, need support, um, you know, whether it's, you know, dedicated engineering time or financial support, um, you know, find out how you can get involved as a sponsor. And then when you do, publicize that. Uh, the project will state that you're a sponsor, but, you know, say it with pride on your own marketing materials. Um, offer to do a case study that can be posted on your website and the project website where you can reference each other, where you describe how you're doing great things with that awesome, awesome open source project. Present at an event like this. So again, you know, we're seeing a lot of that, um, you know, this week where, you know, people are talking about the great things that they're doing with um, open source projects. And I think that's fantastic. 
And I would say, you know, again, um, <laughs> you, you know, it, we're all, it's a community, right? And, and it's all people, you know? So if, if you send an email to, you know, trademarks at linuxfoundation.org, it goes to me. Like, I'm, I'm that, you know, the black hole where that email is going, it, it goes to me. And, you know, so I'm the one you'll be talking to. And the same thing with the project, just engage with them. Like, hey, we love your project. Like, how can we promote it in a way that's gonna make you happy? Um, and they're going to have ideas. And every project is, you know, in community ecosystems are a little different. Um, so, I, you know, even if you think you have a great idea and they're going to love it, I'd still discuss it with them. You know, see if they feel the same way. All right. And one, the last thing I want to do is promote somebody else's talk. Um, and actually, I don't know Libby and, and Colleen, but I was looking at the schedule and um, I was like, this is awesome. So they're gonna be talking, um, I looked through their slide deck, which is um, already on the, the Summit's uh, website. Um, they're gonna be talking about a lot of these same issues, but from the marketing perspective. Um, so they're at Amazon Marketing Professionals. Um, so I'm gonna be at the session. I encourage you to go to hear probably some better ideas than I had. Um, but hopefully this gave you um, kind of a, a, a legal grounding. Like we're not just mean when we say, hey, stop using the project trademark this way. Like there's good reasons for it and important reasons. Um, and like I said, I, I don't feel like it's necessarily antagonistic. I think that it's uh, downstream users and the projects can really be aligned um, and develop um, and promote each of their own brands. So I will open the floor to questions, comments, ideas, things you love that companies do with, with projects that you work on? Right. Yep. Could be. So... Sure. I would say, you know, that's a, um, a decision that, you know, the project has to make for itself. Um, so I'll, I'll talk specifically about open source projects and, you know, what the, the brands are. Um, so certainly the, the name of the project, in some cases, um, very important um, modules or features within it are branded as well. Um, typically, there's some sort, <coughs> excuse me, of a design element. Um, so whether it's a logo or just a stylized font in a particular color scheme. Um, you mentioned colors. Um, you don't see that quite as much, but it is an effective branding tool. Um, and so sometimes, um, you, you, know, you know, like the Linux Foundation, you know, we've got our two shades of blue and we kind of always have. Um, you know, I would take the view that that is, you know, that's a distinctive part of, of our logo is, is the color scheme. Um, you know, but sometimes projects will use different colors to communicate different things. Um, so the yellow version of the logo is, you know, for this use scenario, and the green version is for this scenario. Um, but so it can be, you know, part of the branding. But um, you know, I say one, be intentional, um, but also and keep it simple. Um, you, you know, like I said earlier, you know, more is not necessarily better. Um, it's better to have a really strong mark, one of them, and build everything around that. Um, now, you asked about mascots. Um, and again, that's, I would say, you know, be intentional about what you want to do there. Because um, I think, you know, you can go a couple different routes. You can have a mascot that is, um, that is functioning as a trademark. And there you probably do want to keep it consistent or you know, have it, maybe it has, you know, different hats or whatever, different color shoes and, and you know, but you control that and, and decide what you want to do. Other companies, and I think probably the, the most prominent example, um, well, it's, it's quite dated now, um, was the Android guy for Google. Um, they didn't claim trademark protection in that. So they licensed out the, um, 
the mascot artwork under a copyright license, which allowed people to make it. They wanted people to play with it and mess with it um, and, and be out there. And that was just a strategic decision that they made. Um, so that's an approach, like right, wrong. No, it's just, you know, that's, it's just what they decided to do. And um, it, it seems like it was pretty successful for them. So. Any other questions? All right. So like I said, um, I'm the Linux Foundation Chief Brand Counsel. I'm the guy who gets those emails when you email trademarks at linuxfoundation.org. Linux um, I'm a lawyer, but um, please don't be bashful about reaching out um, if you ever have any questions. Thanks. Yeah, so the, <laughs> I mean, you might have two separate questions in there. I mean, they're always going to be, they should be really easy to find on any project's uh, website. Um, you know, again, typically at the bottom with those links that you, you ignore, again, the privacy policy, et cetera, there should be a link there to the trademark usage guidelines. It might be nested under, like, other legal policies. Um, um, but then it's like, oh, well, you, can you just like take somebody's policy you like um, and claim them as your own? Um, probably want to discuss that with your lawyer. Um, arguably, it's covered by copyright law. Um, some trademark usage guidelines expressly say that um, you can license it, uh, you can use it under one of the CC licenses. Um, so just follow that. Um, you know, it's, I, I think it's, it probably is protected by copyright, so it's it's worth talking to a lawyer about it. Um, it. You know, it is. There's a lot of it that's functional, which wouldn't necessarily be protected by copyright, but it's probably enough creative expression in a trademark usage uh, policy that um, uh, has it protected. So before you just you know copy something verbatim, um, you know, again, you, yeah, exactly. I mean, that that's probably you know the better point is. I mean, you might find one that's like, this says exactly what we want to do, but, you know, at least over time, there's going to be situations where you're going to want to change things to match, you know, what your project is doing. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, the, um, you know, don't use the trademark in a confusingly similar way. Well, every trademark usage guideline has that sentence in it. So, um, you know, copying something like that isn't you know, a risky behavior, um, but you might say it your own way. <laughs>